1700 pound twin turbo diesel Volkswagen Beetle that's currently one second away for the diesel record on the Pikes Peak hill climb. The climb is almost 12 and a half miles and famous for its 156 daring turns and its 14,115 foot finish line. And this is Greg. It's a driver and creator. So we're here in Tennessee with Greg, and this is his race car, and he's gonna tell us all about it. So this is a, um, a fun cup. Um, it's a race car from Europe. I imported. I always wanted to have a mid-engine TDI monster. I make a, a bunch of engines for all type of applications, and uh, I always wanted to have an iconic uh, car I could just uh, uh, represent my company with. Yeah. And the Beetle. So I saw that Beetle that was a mid-engine configuration. <clears throat> And I fell in love. Yeah, it, it was light using the four uh, four cylinder Volkswagen layout. It was a gasoline version, but right. it was sort of easy to integrate uh, the TDI. It was pretty much bolted ready in. To go. Yeah, <laughs> roughly how much does it weigh? Uh, about seventeen hundred pounds. And this weighs nothing. Like, what is that? Maybe. 20 pounds? Uh, I don't I know. It was 17. 17. 17, wow. And that's still with this big, thick chunk in the front, this fiberglass. It's a lot of weight to say. So in the front, there is uh, no engine because it's in the rear. Yeah. But yeah, in the front, we have the cooling package, fuel cell. And a chemical sprayer from Home Depot. Yeah. This, this was rigged up last minute to cool the, the, the cooling package. So we had a cooling uh, package, nice. We have four nozzles that are aiming about approximately uh, the optimized position. <laughs> <laughs> Very technical. Yes, and uh, these start to spray water when from inside the cab I push a button and it just starts spraying. This is good for nine minutes of spray. It helps uh, big time with the temps. So now we had a look at the front. Let's take a look behind uh, where the engine's at. Man, that's very light. So I went with uh, the latest TDI ever made from production. Yeah. That, uh, that makes the most power. Right. I, I told myself, you know, why get an old TDI and do all the internals and pistons and whatever. Right. Uh, so in, in Europe they make a a TDI SUV, mm -hmm. uh, 240 horse torque, uh, 240 horse stock. Yeah, it's right from uh, right from the factory. We use a different turbo system, so we got rid of the stock twin turbo and we replace with some compound turbos. Um, so we we run 50 psi boost in there. Wow, that's that's um, a bit. Yeah. We have high flow injectors. The engine is kind of a key feature of the performance of this car, but really uh, the secret is kind of right here in the PDK. Uh, this transmission is from the Porsche Cayman and uh, has seven speed and shifts in 50 milliseconds. So wow. we, we get this thing exploring. Uh, so you get this engine and those turbos spooling and then you can just like bam bam bam, bam. And and it's always it's always up and spooling there was no there's no lag at all right because in between shifts they are so quick the boost doesn't go down so when right I, when i look at the data on the logs i see a gear change but the boost just stay a straight line which is magic wow. yeah where before the yeah. manual transmission Upshift, I, I could see the boost completely drop like uh, I don't know, 
30 psi, which is right. the whole thing. Yeah. And then take another second to spool again. So making power here at, at sea level is very easy. Right. But the challenge is to maintain those high numbers at the peak. And mm -hmm. so far we produce uh, 350 horse at the peak. That's at 14,000 feet, right? Yeah, 14.5, yeah. yeah, which is amazing. And, uh, and here at sea level around 410. Mm -hmm. And we lose 60 horsepower um, going up there. Suspension are pretty, pretty, pretty light in a way that we use a single control arm. So the control arm is um, Audi 4000. Okay. It's it's a it's just a stamped piece of metal. It's yeah. Extremely thin and light. Yeah. And the knuckles are from the, the Golf NK2. Gotcha. It's just a four by one hundred. Very simple, very light. Yeah, so compared, I was like, hey, maybe I should run the Porsche, Boxster, mm -hmm. Cayman. Right. Knuckles, they have like nice brakes, nice nice bearing situation. And so I compared them and the, the Volkswagen 4x100 was extremely light. Yeah. It was like super light. Pretty much it is pre-engaging the, it so it predicts your next gear. Right, depending on how you're accelerating. So let's say you're, you're three quarter in the pedal, or, or pedal to metal, it will predict you're going up, up shift. Right. And, and so it already engages the next gear because it has two shafts in there. Oh, wow. And two clutches. Right. You can, you can pretty much imagine two transmissions next to each other, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, one transmission will be ready for the, next, the following gear. That, and, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and so what it does is it just shifts, it just switch uh, clutches. From one to the other, it engages yeah. one and disengages the other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that takes 50 milliseconds and the gear is already pre-engaged. And so that's just like, it's, it's crazy how, how it just keep pushing. And yeah, that's amazing. Or the auto would be sliding some, we would have some loss of power. Do you still have to select the gears or does it do that for you? So the very first uh, test drives we were doing or usage was with the pedal shift, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't like the, the pedal shift. Mm -hmm. so it was in a way similar to shifting a, with a, a regular stick shift because you have to do something special, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it distracts you. So the the ECU I'm using allows for um, tuning the shift depending on uh, pedal, pedal position, engine load and all those parameters. Right. So I calibrated this thing so it, it just shifts automatically. I can keep my two hands on the steering wheel and uh, this way I can purely focus on trajectory, uh, braking distances and, and I just like the shifting becomes pretty much, I don't even think about it. Anymore. Right. It's pretty, it would pretty much be like driving a Tesla. Right. A Tesla yeah. driver is is really successful right now at Pike Peak because mm -hmm. of this reason. This guy is just accelerator, brake. That's it. Yeah. And, and, and steering. Focus. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm kind of like this, but, right. but a diesel package. Yeah. Well, I mean, a computer can think a million times faster than you can, so it, it knows when it needs to shift. Yeah. I mean, once you, you know, program it, but yeah, that's awesome. Bone stock internals, they're built for uh, 50 PSI boost. Right. So they, they did a good job at, uh, at the factory. So I'm not touching this right now. Right, that's not yet. amazing. Uh, until we blow it up, yeah. Yeah. So the turbos are Garrett. Yeah. Um, I, I had to look for something small because this engine right. is a two liter. Yeah. And on the market, you can only find monsters for the other diesel boys that use like <laughs> right. seven liters or yeah, eight yeah. liters. Yeah. So I was I took the smallest Garrett racing available, which is a it's a G twenty five six sixty, 
It, it stands for 660 horsepower capable. Hmm. It's, it's fairly large. Yeah. Right? So this is uh, what we use for the low pressure turbo. So the low pressure turbo is like the big one. This guy. This one? Yeah. And for the high pressure turbo, so the tiny the tiny turbo down, down there is is a turbo they actually uh, market for motorcycles. Really? It's, it's a Garrett GT 2052 series. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like water cooled. It's, it's lacking some features that mm. would be good for a race car. Right. But we we still we still modified it. So mm -hmm. where I integrated a a turbo um, speed sensors. Wow. So we could measure the speed of the turbo. Uh, we also built a hybrid out of it. So we modified the the compressor wheel, the turbine wheel mm -hmm. to make them slightly bigger. So it's a, it's pretty much a new turbo that we have inside. Yeah. But so it's, it's based custom. out of Garrett. The the exhaust blows in the high pressure turbo first. Mm. It it's uh it quick it quickly spools it. The it smaller makes, one? Yeah, it makes the initial boost. Yeah. yeah so the, the high pressure turbo is a small one. Yeah, so it builds the boost right away because it hit that turbo first. Mm -hmm. And when the first when the turbo reach its maximum RPM, so because we have that sensor, we know right. when it hits 170 K, for example, 170,000 RPM, it opens the wastegate. Mm -hmm. So we have like a program that will fill the turbo speed or the pressure. So right. It's like either or kind mm -hmm. of programming system, but pretty much once the first turbo hit its target, it opened the flow for the low pressure turbo. And so then it flows from the outlet of the small turbo into the inlet of the, the low pressure turbo. Yeah. yeah. And, and by doing this, by opening this first wastegate of this first turbo, you release uh, exhaust energy mm -hmm. uh, directly to the low pressure turbine. Right. And, and so this energy that comes out of the engine that is not going through a, a turbo turbine mm -hmm. is more energetic than than the energy that goes through the turbine. So it's just like pretty much every hot gas you mm -hmm. want it to be directed and being used by a turbine as right. much as possible. Yeah. So that's a uh, very important in this setup. down uh, the first compressed air from the tiny turbo uh, with this interstage so it uh, it's routed like this comes through and then is feeding the bigger turbo mm -hmm. uh, it's very important to, to drop the temps uh, one um, to keep the turbo happy right you know, if you just stack stack up temps yeah, it's just being super yeah. hot mm -hmm. and, and the second reason is uh, uh, the, the drops uh, when uh, when you cool down the air, you just carry more energy potential. Right. Uh, so uh, this energy, uh, this this turbo then gets the colder air and is then so compressed by the larger one mm -hmm. and goes in the main intercooler. So we have two two intercooler, interstage and engine intercooler. Yeah. And then so it comes up back down here. Yeah. So here you have 50 psi that goes in there. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. And then those are air to water intercoolers, right? So the, the there's a big heat exchanger up front yeah. that pumps water through the whole exactly. system. Exactly. We have two pumps uh, that are high flow and they just keep the, the coolant travel to the front, get cooled down. Uh, we also try to kind of force air in the intake yeah. to, to help some, like a, any any little ram air yeah. helps. Yeah. And this is to cool the oil. Every every oil cooling system here is cooled um, to extract as much as yeah. possible.
blast hanging out with Greg at Boxier, and he actually invited us to go to Pikes Peak with him in 2021. And one does not turn down an invitation to Pikes Peak. We will be filming the event and showing you guys the modifications Greg's going to do to the Beetle. He's going to switch to a three turbo setup from turbokits.com. That'll be really interesting. And Greg uploaded his full Pikes Peak run from 2020. It's on his YouTube channel, so you can click on that below in the description. 